What's up, my know-it-alls? Well, it's definitely that time again. That's right. It is Thursday, which that means it is Strange New Worlds Day. If you're wondering about the get-up, well, we have a shore leave episode. Let's go. Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Episode 5, Spock Amok. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Okay, so, man, what a good, what a fun episode. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I've actually been really, really loving the show a lot. Um, you know who else has been loving it? My father. That's right. My father's a good old TOS fan from back in the day. Uh, he's the one that got me into the original, really appreciating the original series. With We had all the Columbia House VHS tapes. Uh, and then, of course, that's the reason why I own the digital versions on, uh, on Amazon. But, uh, yeah, man, it... This show continues to delight in ways I didn't expect, and uh, uh, spoilers for for uh, the the show if you haven't watched it yet. Go watch it. Seriously, pause it. I'll wait. Go watch it. You back? <laughs> All right. So let's go. The episode starts with uh, we clearly descend on a Vulcan ceremonial uh, arena, one that we are very familiar with. So by that I mean, if you remember from the TOS episode of Mock Time, uh, the the Spock Amok name starts to sound a little bit more familiar, and so in 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 this the entire episode parallel is about is about Spock and T'Pring trying to understand one another. Okay, now there is a parallel storyline of Nurse Chapel sort of figuring out, or Doctor Chapel, whatever she is, Scientist Chapel, trying to figure out some stuff. Uh, on her own in terms of, of relationships and whether they're good, whether they're bad. Ortega plays a little bit of a cameo part in this thing, but not much. But it's okay, because she's been, uh, Erica Ortega has been in many, many things of late. So uh, we're big fans anyway. So then you shift over to the other storyline, which is a more of a Starfleet <clears throat> thing specifically, and that is a peace treaty with a brand new species who's looking to enter or potentially go and uh, join the Federation. And I guess their alternatives would be like the Klingon whatever or the Romulans or someone else. And so the idea uh, of uh, that, that all of these things share some commonality. Anyway, so yeah, so the this is exactly what I thought it was going to be, which is what I, I said last week, which is this is in Spock's head. This entire opening part is happens in Spock's head in that he is very much worried. So the uh, the entire thing in, uh, is that he arrives and, and T'Pring's like, Spock, what's, what's happened? And look at your ear. And she points and he moves his hair and there's his ears are human. His hair is less bowl-like and more human. Uh, he basically is Ethan Peck. And and then she's like, well, then I I can't marry you. You're, you, you're, you're human or whatever. And so she says, I she invokes... Caliphate. Uh, Cali for those of you playing at home, Caliphate was the same exact thing that involved Spock fighting someone uh, in uh, in the mock time. And it was Captain Kirk. I mean, I'm not exactly trying to hide, you know, no spoilers for a show that's years and years old. Um, and so they, it, then she said, he's like, who, who am I going to fight? And she's like, him. And it's Vulcan Spock. Clearly, this is meant to mirror what's going on in Spock's head in terms of the, the the human side, Vulcan side, reconciling them, the whole bit. So, T'Pring, when he wakes up, T'Pring has shown up. She's there at the ship. The entire the entire crew and everybody is at uh, Starbase One. That's the one from the very from the pilot episode with all these little uh, biodomes. So everyone, it's shore leave. Hence, you put your uniforms away. Maybe at most. You bring your communicator just so that people can get a hold of you in the ship. But for the most part, that's it. You're going on shore leave, man. And so uh, you, it, it's great. So the <laughs> there's this really cool opening scene where Laon and uh, and uh, 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 <laughs> there's a, like a D plot somewhere in here that kind of fizzles until the end. And it's this whole thing. I'll cover it real fast. Um, it's this whole thing with uh, with Laon and uh, number one, where they're the ones staying behind, and somebody makes a joke and is like, 
<laughs> it's right over here. Oh, he's not somebody. It's a Menga. A Menga makes a joke. A Menga, by the way, going fly fishing. Love him. Um, and so he makes the joke. He's like, oh, yeah, the nickname. And she's like, what nickname? And everybody's like, shut up, bro. Shut up. And so you come to find out they call her, or they call them, rather, where fun goes to die. That's not a nickname, dude. That's, that's a flat-out insult. By that, I mean, a nickname is something you can say quickly off the top of your tongue. Mr. Know-it-all. Very simple. I'm not sitting here going, he who must think he knows everything in the world and must therefore tell everyone else as well. I'm not, you know, I don't do that. So it's, I... So I just feel like it's a weird thing to call it a nickname. Anyways, the point is that Una finds out that everybody thinks she's boring, and ultimately her and Lon, they, uh, they later on they find a couple of crewmen who are trying to do something stupid and come to find out that's when they discover Enterprise Bingo. She's never known about it. Uh, she being number one, number one hasn't known about Enterprise Bingo. And so they find and Lon had confiscated someone's Enterprise Bingo pad. And so they decide, well, we're going to go ahead and let's try to understand everybody. It's like, I don't, I, I don't care that people think I'm not fun, but let me at least try to understand you. Let's do Enterprise Bingo. And so that's literally what they do. And again, that story kind of fizzles out because they go, it's maybe two thirds, it goes two thirds of the way in and you don't see them again until literally the very end. Uh, so then the other storyline, back to the main, main quote unquote storyline, is the T'Pring and Spock scenario. Hence the name of the episode, Spock Amok. And so in that scenario, uh, what you find is T'Pring is very much the first time we saw her, she's on the back burner. Remember, pilot episode, all of a sudden, uh, Mountain Man Pike calls him up and is like, we gotta go back out. Number one's been lost and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so it's cool. And so they go. Anyway, so now she's here and she's like, all right, great. This is, this is everyone else is taking shore leave. It's vacation time. The problem is Spock has a little bit of work to get done before he can go on vacation, or on shore leave rather. And that's, he's gotta help with these negotiations with this new species. Uh, uh, this is when we get the green outfit. <laughs> I saw the top of it in the trailers. It's Pike, Pike's wearing the green wraparound. It's the one that James T. Kirk used to wear. So it's definitely, this is now in canon, a uniform option. And it looks amazing. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I might have been able to use the little gold frillies for those of you who are used to the actual, uh, uh, you know, William Shatner version from back in the day. But I'm okay. Either way, I think uh, I thought it was really cool to see this thing. So anyway, so Spock's stuck with uh, Pike having to help negotiate with these people. And it goes long. He comes home, back to his his, uh, his quarters. And T'Pring is pretty much, she had prepared everything. And he didn't. Why didn't you call? If you're going to be late, hope you ate with your friends or whatever. <laughs> and so she, um, uh, she tells him, look, man, I, I put off my very important work and you know for us and i need you to try also it's the it's the age-old thing okay partner said you work you're busy this and that it's that tug of war that life work balance anyway and so he goes and talks to um a, a chapel or actually he goes to the to the somewhere a restaurant somewhere what on one of the bio whatevers and chapel is having a ba very bad date with this guy i guess she's been kind of um having a fling with and uh but he decides to get serious and she's like oh why well, you have to ruin it and so, um, so she sees Spock and she uses him as an opportunity to bail and she goes over to Spock and she's like, Hey, so they're talking and he explains the whole situation. And she says, listen, you need to try to see things through her eyes, through her perspective. Here we go. Now you have, now you got the beginning of, now you have the beginning of what the episode calls hijinks. <laughs> and again, love that Vulcan writing, man. I love, I, I've never seen or envisioned Vulcans in this light. But because I, I think the original series, um, TOS, really painted Vulcans in a almost austere type of thing where you're like, we are Vulcans. And they still do that. But these Vulcans, they're rude. They're like us. They're like people. The only difference is I hide my rudeness behind being logical. But at the same time, you're, you're like, but you're still a jerk. Whatever. Anyway. So, yeah, man. Uh, uh, so then you go to this point. Uh, shoot, I lost myself. Oh, right. So, what does Spock do? What anybody does in that scenario. He decides to have us uh, do a 
what's called a soul joining. The soul joining is a Vulcan ritual where they sit down, there's candles, there's always candles, lots of bells, always bells. There's always things going on that ultimately lead to them being uh, uh, needing or requiring to be, you know, uh, formal. I have, a, I have a theory. My theory is that Vulcans hide their emotion behind ritual and all these like phrases and things like that. It's like, I can't show you, I cannot show you the emotions I feel where we would run up to someone and be like, oh my God, I miss you so much. Vulcans, you have to be like, our Vulcans are like, heart of my heart, soul of my soul. My, the sun longs for you. I mean, <laughs> something like super flowery poetic stuff. And I'm like, dang y'all, y'all getting deep over here. Anyway. Uh, so they do a ritual. The ritual is supposed to essentially uh, bond their katras together briefly so they can see the world through each other's eyes. What it ends up doing? Freaky Friday switch up! They end up switching up and literally ch exchange bodies. And I love this because even though it's... It, I would say that was a trope of shows back in the day. I haven't seen it in a while. And it really gave me the nostalgia feels. They're not mirroring any... They're not blazing any original new trail with this story. But who cares? It's fun. Dude, You this whole episode is nostalgia and one in the best way. Because you gotta remember, every show is someone's first show. So literally, what you're getting is, someone's gonna see this episode, and you know what they're gonna hear? They're gonna hear the Amok time. It was so great! I was so excited. My point is like, they're doing such cool stuff, man. So having the switcheroo is awesome. Immediately, uh, the actress who plays Tapring is doing, a, she's immediately, she starts talking a little bit more like uh, formally and, and this, and she's using bigger, slightly bigger gestures. And, and, uh, and the, uh, Ethan Peck as Spock as he's, he goes a little softer, but he's still also being a Vulcan. They're doing the thing that, you know, actors love to do, which is, hey, I get to play some, someone else who's me. That's awesome. So, anyways, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it, was, it was. It's a lot of fun to watch. And so, literally at that moment, there's a knock at the door. The negotiations have fallen apart. the The race, the the, the species that they're talking to, will not talk to Pike again. They won't talk to him. You find out why later, and that's another thing I really enjoy. Uh, uh, and they don't want to talk to him. So what they end up doing. They said they will only talk to Spock, which is cool. So you're like, okay. And so one thing real quick before we get into that part. Earlier on when that when the species had been presented to Pike, they had shown video footage of them yelling at a Tellurite. The Tellurites are a notoriously rude and brusque species in Star Trek. So for those of you playing at home. And so... Then when Pike was talking to them, he came in, he was, they were sort of, they, they, they really didn't have a mode. And as soon as Pike was like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, I want to talk to you, have a seat, this and that. They immediately were like, well, thanks so much. Oh man, it's great. It's really good talking. Like their whole tone shifted and you kind of were like, dude, did he drop character? Cause he doesn't, he's not acting like an alien. He's acting like a human. Later on, now we come to this part, Spock steps in. Spock. So, okay, but it's even better than that. So Pike comes in and he's talking and he's trying to talk and both Tapring and Spock are, do, are, are doing the thing and where they're like, they're like, oh, who's this person and blah, blah, blah. And, and Tapring's having to not call him Captain, but call him Chris and it's the whole thing. And so they tell him and he's like, oh, that, you don't understand. Like, so this race that they're, that they're, uh, they're meeting with apparently like it holds the future security and possibilities for expansion in the Federation, uh, that entire area. So they're like key, key to the Federation's designs on growth and just kind of being able to continue to expand. Anyway, so to bring is like, sorry, Spock to bring is like, isn't this why we did this? We wanted to go ahead and see the world through one another's eyes. And to bring Spock is like, okay, fine. All right. And so sure enough, she goes out there and goes to talk. And then, so we then jump to, uh, to bring Spock to bring, I'm sorry, to bring Spock gets a call. It's one of to bring's coworkers. Who's like, Hey, we have this opportunity. I guess to bring is some kind of a, of a, 
Vulcan activist. There are Vulcans who, though you are, they are born from young youth. Uh, they get disillusioned with the path of logic. They want to, and they, uh, so they become, uh, what are the, those, um, we saw them in season, in Enterprise. It was the, they are uh, like logic terrorists, I guess. And um, so she helps talk them down and help them give, basically a rehab for Vulcans. She's a she's a social worker for Vulcans, <laughs> Vulcans who are have lost their way or aren't on the path anymore. Whatever, but yeah, man, it's a, it, it's this is a, again really fun episode, and so Spock goes to meet with the guy and he brings Chapel with him because he's us uh, because so to bring Spock has told uh, has told Chapel what's going on. Chapel thinks it's hilarious and uh, and then so they go to meet the dude and they come to find out. You know what? Before I say that, I'm gonna back up two seconds. Back in the negotiations with the aliens, to, uh, uh, Spock to Pring is trying to have the negotiation. Is trying to talk, and it run is butting heads because and and Pike's listening. Spock to Pring is basically saying, you know. Oh no, the Federation, this and that. We're we're because so you find out this alien race, their worry is they're going to become homogenized. They're going to lose their individuality when they join the Federation. Nothing can be farther from the truth. And so and and they can't understand how you can govern with so many voice, so many unique voices, and, and uh, effectively they just can't see it, and that's fair. So what ends up happening is Pike steps up, realizing to Pring's having a hard time, Spock to Pring, um, and so. Uh, uh, then Pike takes the opportunity to explain, "Hey, I'm really this and that. Listen, I gotta. I'm gonna bail my first off, my uh, second officer off, uh, science officer here. I'm gonna bail him out." And he essentially says, "Listen, man, Spock's one of the best. He's he's a shining example. If you want to know what the Federation's about, that right there." And that really made Spock to bring to bring inside Spock's head feel understand a little, see through his eyes. Back to uh, to bring Spock. To bring Spock is meeting with this. Guy, this logic terrorist, whatever, who who hopefully to bring can bring rehabilitate, and and the dude proceeds to start dressing her down about her fiance, i.e. Spock. So to Spock, obviously. Meanwhile, uh, so Chapel is defending Spock. Spock to bring or to bring Spock is defending Spock, and finally, dude starting to be insulting, and to bring Spock punches him, knocks him out. And it's like, well, bringing them in is what it matters, I guess. So, yeah. Anyway, that's yeah. <laughs> it. Was interesting. All right, man. Uh, this, uh, the episode continues on, and you get to, you get this really great uh, moment at the end where they both kind of say, "Hey, we understand one another." Um, Pike does have a final moment with those aliens, where he essentially says, "Listen, man, you have uh, you got no reason to want to join us. I, t t I can totally understand. I mean, we you, we we we, we uh, subsume your individuality. We may or may not even help you if you're. Yeah, you know, I understand. Totally. And and essentially is like, and he basically says, "Don't you don't want to you don't want to join us? Don't do that. You don't want to do that." We're everything you we're everything you worried we are, and uh, oh, we also get Admiral April in this as well because he's I'm sorry because I'm about to bring him up and I didn't say him earlier anyway, and April's like what in the heck was that and and because uh, the guy stands up and says thank you and leaves, so then uh, and and uh, I love it Pike and this is the thing that feels so Star Trek. Pike is like I'm playing a hunch. And the hunch is, this species, they just want to be seen. They want, they, they want someone to validate their concerns. They want someone to see their point of view. That's such a unique Star Trek-ism when it comes to a species idiosyncrasy or a thing. I, I love it. I love it so much. It's such a great characterization of this species. And uh, so then and they have the ceremonial ship. And so after they leave, everyone's worried. And not long after, the ship raises the flag of the Federation. The ship that they haul out is always, they, oh, whenever they do negotiations, the flag goes up if the negotiation has been good and they have a new ally. So it's the first, oh, it's great. They say it's wonderful. And again, I just love, I love this episode. There wasn't a whole lot of craziness. There wasn't a whole lot of insanity. It was just a fun episode. And then finally, so now you circle back at the very end to La'an and Number One, who are doing the final, the final uh, space in Enterprise Bingo, which is sign the scorch. 
They, they've set up a force field just over the front of the hull on top of the, uh, on top of the uh, saucer section, and they walk out, and there's a, the oldest unreplaced deck plate. And it's supposed to be good luck to sign it. And they sign it. And just as they do that, they're like, eh, they're kind of like, eh, I guess maybe this is whatever. That ship, that solar ship with the flag flies over. And because they're technically walking on a force field, they're in space. They're in space. But the, the force was keeping a little air bubble for the, uh, out, out there for them. So you can, because you're in space and you can hear the proximity, whatever, it's so cool. It, think about how visceral that would be. When you're in a starship, you see everything through the wind through the port, through the porthole, through the window, through the whatever, through the view screen. And to be standing on the actual hull in actual space to see a spaceship pass overhead. Yes, there's a force field, but you can't see it. So it just feels like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm firsthand looking at a spaceship. That's that must be an incredible, incredible moment. And the two of them do reflect that in a really good way that I was I was excited to see. So yeah. There you go. Now you know. And if knowing is half the battle, you are halfway to being a know-it-all, and I know you can be. So, what is my know-it-all index rating for this episode for this week? I'm going to go flat out and say this episode was so much fun, I can't, I didn't find anything bad about the episode. Not, not a thing. I'm going to go nine and a half. Why nine and a half? The only, the only thing, and I'm trying to be nitpicky on purpose, because I don't want to just give a free pass to my Star Trek episodes, um, is that I wish they would have kind of sprinkled a little more of the La'an, Una, uh, number one thing. I felt like that was just filler to keep those two actors busy because they didn't have any place for them in the main plot, so they kind of created this one. Um, it would have been a full 10 out of 10 if that had been the case. So for now, it's 9.5 out of 10. So, yeah, man, that was a great episode. Comment below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Uh, of course, myself and Mrs. Know-It-All most likely are going to talk about it uh, next Tuesday on Trek Talk Tuesdays. Always check those out. The playlists will be uh, uh, listed in the description below. And, yeah, man, share the show. I'd love to, as we this channel starts to continue to grow, I am so excited to be helping uh, the just further the fandom of Star Trek and things of that nature uh, out there. Man, I love it everyone y'all thank you so much for the comments thank you for being so welcoming i can't wait to see you next week never forget everyone loves a know-it-all